everybody, it's Lorelai and welcome back to Umaneko episode 2, part 2. The last time we left off, we saw how everyone was treating Shannon and the golden witch Beatrice materialized before our very eyes. But anyway, without further ado, let's just get right into today's story. <coughs> Look at how shocked Shannon is at Jessica's outburst. Since Jessica's cheeks had been stuffed with chocolate coated Chinsuko biscuit that Shannon had brought as a souvenir from Okinawa, it all flew out at Shannon when Jessica cried out. So that trip that they took at the beginning of episode 2 must have been the same one that they are talking about now since they did go to Okinawa. それも ましてや、部屋は男女に別名やってなんだよ。from Shannon's perspective, a lot of things had happened and it seemed to have been a very happy trip. But it looked like the missed opportunity had left Jessica feeling greatly unfulfilled. For a while, Jessica chewed on her souvenir, writhing on her bed as she complained about their romance. <laughs> She's getting so worked up over someone else's relationship. Shannon and George had chosen to go to Okinawa because there was a huge aquarium there. That was because their first meeting had revolved around an aquarium. Oh, really? That's, that's so interesting. Since they had started at an aquarium, having their first overnight trip also be to an aquarium must have held some commemorative value. そんな綺麗の節目の初のお泊り旅行ならいろいろと進展するもんがある<笑> Wait, what? ジョージさんがそこをしっかりするのが男女のマナーだとおっしゃって。だからそれを踏み越えるためのお泊り旅行じゃねえのかよ。もはやキューとかキューとかのレベルじゃねえぜ。お、お嬢様がどういう意味で
continually intertwining, separating, and making heart shapes with them. Apparently, the dramatic progress Jessica had looked forward to hadn't happened, but it seemed that it had been a very important experience for Shannon in her own way. So, in the end, no matter how much Jessica envied Shannon or made fun of her, it didn't change the fact that Shannon had a huge lead on her. But I guess this means they are very close. For Jessica to act like this in front of Shannon. あの、お嬢様は素敵な方ですから、私なんかより<笑><笑><笑> Jessica threw several cushions at her, but midway she had an asthma attack and started to cough pretty badly. Shannon hurriedly ran over to her and took a look on top of the nearby side table. An adorable basket was placed there, and inside of it was Jessica's inhaler. Shannon picked it up and handed it over to Jessica. Jessica's asthma attacks always came suddenly. Because of this, she had to carry this medicine around with her at all times. She breathed in the medicine and after some time spent holding back her coughing, her asthma finally settled down. Shannon thought this was a good chance to leave, bowed courteously and made to exit the room. As she did, one more small cushion came flying and hit Shannon on the head. She looked around and saw that Jessica was on the verge of crying, half of her face buried in her last and favorite cushion. The face was red and meek. Oh. Oh, I wonder what's wrong. お嬢様の髪はとても美しいと思います。じゃ、じゃ、じゃ、目とか変かな。鼻とか変じゃないかな。やっぱり喋り方がダメなのかな。だから彼氏できないのかな。そんなはずはありませんよ。お嬢様は
She strongly regretted feeling a little too self-satisfied. Oh? ごめん。お嬢様は素敵な方です。そんなお嬢様に素敵な男性が現れないわけがありません。シャノ、もう時間だろ。早く行かないとまたゲンチさんや母さんに怒られるぜ。私は全然平気だから早く行きなよ。Jessica faced away as if to show she wasn't looking for attention and waved her hand as though to drive Shannon away. Shannon took that as a sign that she didn't want to be badgered anymore, bowed her head and left the room. You know, I was thinking about this for a while for a while already that despite Jessica's rough and kind of boyish way of speaking it does seem like she is a very how do you say this she's definitely like a very feminine kind of girl she has the same kind of worries that other girls do at her age and I'm guessing we're gonna get a bit of a bit more of Jessica's character development in this episode. When her footsteps disappeared into the distance, Jessica lay down on her bed, still hugging the cushion. Her expression was still a little meek, with tears in her eyes. But for the first time in a long time, she had a very very quiet and honest conversation with her heart. I think it's good that Jessica can keep, can be true to herself. And I hope love comes for her. As Shannon watered the flower beds in the garden in high spirits, she sensed someone's presence. She turned around thinking that if one of the family had come to visit, she must greet them. And what she saw was that witch. Be I'm surprised that Beatrice is just walking around in broad daylight. I definitely wasn't expecting her, that's for sure. As Beatrice sat on the rose arch, she happily blew on her pipe. Sitting in a place like that would crush the roses. And it might have been dangerous if you fell off the arch. But after all, this was a witch. This was surely an unnecessary concern. あ、はい。お陰様ですその順調です。当然よ。我らの魔法は適面である。そなたにはまるで二人が出会うのはあらかじめ決められた運命であったかのように感じているかもしれぬ。だがそれは間違いよ。The witch was calling attention to something. Two things, actually. That originally, her relationship with George had been completely impossible. And that her magic power was so great, it could manipulate that fate. Oh. Shannon had become swept up in these sweet days and had started to fall under the illusion that all fate was revolving around her. But the witch's words made her remember. Her relationship with George had been originally impossible. No, might also be impossible in the future as well. <laughs> Sumanu, Sumanu. 
医者と同じよ病に悩めばすがるくせに治れば感謝も忘れるあ,あ Perhaps Shannon hasn't been paying her respects to Beatrice? I don't think she's been paying her respects to Beatrice. I don't think she's been paying her respects to Beatrice. I don't think she's been paying her respects to Beatrice. I don't think she's been paying her respects to Beatrice. I don't think she's been paying her respects to Beatrice. I don't think she's been paying her respects to Beatrice. I don't think she's been paying her respects to Beatrice. 決して忘れたことはありませんすまぬすまぬいじめに来たわけではないのにな口が悪いのはわらわが性分許されよそれより聞いたぞ聞いたぞ二人きりで旅行に行ったとなさぞや楽しかったであろうあはいとてもその。Shannon's face suddenly grew bright. The witch laughed lightly as though that transformation was worth money. Hmm. Moha ya sonata no omoi bito wa ippo teki ni omou dake no sonzai dewa nai. Tagai ni omoi omoareru koi bito dou shi yo. Ai ni mita sareta futari ni totte, sekai wa tada sore dake de seiritz suru. 素晴らしき理想の世界かな Is she talking about love again? The single element that makes up the world <laughs> 魔女も夜行というもの Beatrice laughed pleasantly That smile was without a trace of malice Making her look as though she blessed the lover's secret meaning from the bottom of her heart After that day, Beatrice had shown herself before Shannon every once in a while. Even now, Shannon still thought of her as a creepy being. Oh. I wonder if this would change anything. That deep in her heart, if she still thinks of Beatrice as, you know, creepy, then would Beatrice perhaps retract the gifts that she had given Shannon? However, she was also hugely indebted to this person for bestowing the magic that had given her the relationship she had with George. So Shannon was trying with all her might not to be surprised or scared. So, so that. Ano, Beatrice, sama, Ryoko no omiyage ni okashi o katte kitan desu. Yokatta ra sono. ベアトリーチャ様もいかがでしょうかほう魔女に土産との It seemed that even a witch who boasted of living for 1,000 years hadn't been able to predict that she would receive a souvenir from a pair of sweet lovers. When she saw that surprised expression, Shannon thought of the witch as a friend for the first time. ほうほうラードと小麦粉で作った東洋クッキーかそれを西洋風にチョコで包むとはまさに和洋折衷菓子のシルクロードよの何がおかしい<笑>いい I I'm、like、Shannon right now. I'm so surprised to see this side of Beatrice. 失礼いたしました。This mysterious witch, who surely held a terrifying power, was chomping down on the treats one after another, making a sound like a squirrel stuffing walnuts into its mouth. After a while, Shannon couldn't conceal her laughter. Hmm. <laughs> The witch was in a great mood, having enjoyed the modern treats to the full. 
本当にありがとうございましたもう私には十分だと思いますのでお返しします What is she returning? The thing that Shannon had softly set on the table was a gold colored butterfly brooch. When did she give that to her? I think I'm a little confused. So she's saying that she had, she was granted the meeting with George through the power of Beatrice, but we haven't seen it yet. And Jessica did mention that they met at the aquarium. I feel like I'm missing something here. <laughs> But anyway, let's just continue. Kai mo bara to onazi ka. Sugita sehi wa ne o kusaraseru. Kuro seneba hagukume no hana mo aru. Nara ba suki ni suru ga yoi. Mini tsukezu. Hoseki bako no naka ni shimau mo yokaru. Sore wa sonata ni okutta wara wa no koi da. Sore o kai sarete wa. わらわも誘拐ではないあも申し訳ございませんそういう意味で言ったわけじゃ<笑>気を害してなどおらぬそのブローチはすでにそなたのものわらわとの友情の証しにせいぜい大事にしてくれれば少しは気も慰む持ち続けそのご利益を得るもよし、宝石箱にしまい込むもよし、望むなら、恋路に悩む別のものに譲ろうと、そなたの勝手だ。ただ、大事にしてくれればよい。さすがに粗末にされては、心が痛むでな。According to Beatrice, she had appeared several times in the past in response to a person's summon. So that she could give them an item imbued with some kind of magical power. However, most of them, after they used the power to resolve their worries, would quickly come to think of that power as creepy, and forgetting their feelings of thanks, they would throw away the items they had been given with disgust. Oh, come on! If you're going to go to such lengths to attain power beyond your own abilities, you should be thankful to the end, I think. だから、わらわの行為に、素直に感謝された試しは多くない。いや、初めてか。<笑><笑>
and that there was a great amount of individual variation in people's ability to perceive the witch. Only Shannon and Cannon could interact with her enough to exchange words like this. There were a few people who could sense a presence, but most people couldn't even feel that much. From what Beatrice said, Krauss and his wife in particular had zero magical talent. And no matter how much she followed them around, they would never notice her. <laughs> this is kind of cute. <laughs> or maybe it's creepy. I'm just imagining Beatrice sneaking behind Krauss and, <laughs> and Natsuhi. Just following behind them as they go about their day. Probably not the way she would actually follow them. Silly little image in my head right now. Previously, when Shannon had messed up and Natsuhi had gotten really mad at her, Beatrice had started playing around, hitting Natsuhi on the head with her pipe. <laughs> Indeed, Natsuhi seems completely oblivious. But Shannon, watching that, had burst out laughing without thinking and had gotten scolded even more. Nara, きっと、ベアトリーチ様のお姿にも気づいてくださると思います。お、as soon as they started talking about Kinzo, it felt like the atmosphere around Beatrice changed. She had spoken about crowds and arrests, lack of magic talent as though she looked down on them, but she spoke of Kinzo in a different way. Anyone connected to the Ushiromiya family would know about Kinzo's Legend of the Gold. According to the legend, Kinzo had summoned the witch Beatrice and had been conferred gold. In short, that implied she had some kind of relationship with Kinzo. だからあれは才能の人かけらもないくせに至ったのだ。狂ったように毒学を重ね、魔術師の息にまで達した。それはとてもすごいことなんですね。the witch, who usually looked down on people, was unexpectedly praising someone. While she lambasted Kinzo, calling him talentless, she praised his efforts. そして、親方様は魔法の力でベアトリーチ様を呼び出した。うん。まあ、紹介に答えたのは気まぐれだ。魔法を否定して久しいこのご時世に。<laughs> the words, just my luck, showed that this had been a disaster for her. Shannon hesitated over whether it would be alright to encourage her to continue, but Beatrice continued on her own, ignoring Shannon. 一応、<笑> まほうの才能は<笑> Shannon felt like she was daydreaming. 
While everyone in the Ushiro Miya family knew of the story that Kinzo had delved into sorcery, summoned a witch and had been given gold, in actuality, it was all rambling that no one believed in. And now, the witch herself was telling her that it was true. Shannon felt a little flustered at this insane secret that only she knew. The truth of the world? The single element. She felt like she had heard the witch say those words before. When Beatrice saw Shannon trying to remember what that was, she smiled awkwardly, waving her hand and saying there was no need to remember. この島にもう何十年も縫い止められている。Does it mean that Kinzo trapped her here? No way, right? 誰に話しかけようとも声は届かず、どこへ行くことも出来ない。なんとも退屈な数十年だったことよ。As she laughed in self-derision, she tapped her teacup with her finger. It made the clear sound of porcelain. Shannon didn't know whether the word self-derision was really an accurate expression to describe the look on the witch's face. Shannon didn't understand everything, but she could more or less figure out the situation. And it was surely a topic that she should not press the witch on lightly unless the witch started talking about it herself. To sum up everything she had said up until now, Beatrice, who had been summoned by Kinzo's magic, could not leave this island for some reason. And she had lost her power and her form, living her days in boredom. During that time, her words had reached Shannon, who never forgot to strongly respect the witch. And she had made Shannon help her to regain her power, even if only a little bit of it. As a result, she had become able to drink tea with Shannon like this. ペアトリーチ様が私に悪ように言ったあの鏡は一体何なのですかああ、その話か。この辺りの島で大昔いろいろとあったらしくてな。そのせいで良くないものが溜まり。悪い歪みを引き寄せていたのだ。それを旅の東洋魔術師か何かが鎮魂の社を混流して封じ込めたらしい。それ自体はわらわとはどうでもいいことなのだが、わらわの魔力にも強い関心を及ぼしておって非常
場を一度白紙に戻させたのだそのおかげでようやくわらわの注文した料理が届き力が戻ったというところかもっともようやく食前酒が届いたというところよメインディッシュにはまだまだ遠い今のわらわなど靴屋の妖精にも劣る希薄な存在でな<笑>ん何がおかしい<笑>魔女様の例えがあまりに面白かったものでまさか魔法の話がお料理の話に例えられるとは思いませんでした。我ながらうまい表現だったつもりだがよもや笑われるとは思わなかったぞ少し心外だ Why is Beatrice acting so cute here? A slightly sulky expression rose to the witch's face It would not have been a str strange expression at all to see it appear on the face of two friends as they enjoyed their tea こう見えても昔は残酷極まりないことで知られたわらわだったが<笑>丸くなったものよ人間とこうしてたいない話で茶を買わせるようになるのだから She was probably talking to herself As Beatrice gazed the seabirds tracing the horizon She put her tea to her lips again 雲が出てきたな海も制裁をかけば灰色の水たまりに過ぎぬそうでしょうか曇っても海は美しくて真っ青だと思います<笑> Maybe the witch had noticed the deep meaning behind Shannon's words She laughed lightly and set down her empty teacup もはやそなたの両目に埋められているのは黒い石ころではないらしい。Her pupils? <笑>どうだ家具から人間に生まれ変わった気持ちは理解できておるか<笑>はい。世界がこんなにも優しかったなんて知りませんでした。Since her relationship with George had begun, Shannon's face had grown brighter, more often. Her smile had made everything go smoothly and had even changed her luck. Shannon made fewer mistakes in her work than she had before, and the family member's opinion of her was starting to change slightly. Just the other day, Krauss, who rarely exchanged words with her, Had suddenly started talking to her, surprising her. Surprised Krauss even bothers. Now, if only Krauss is this nice to Natsuhi. That had become a chance for Shannon to gain confidence in herself. Of course, it didn't go beyond her own heart, and it wasn't so big a change that everyone could see it. But she had begun to change. Bit by bit. Shannon understood it clearly. To know love was to gain a soul. Back to the love. The problem. No, not the problem. The topic of love. And therefore, to be born again from furniture to a human. There was absolutely nothing mistaken in Beatrice's words. By knowing love, Shen had learned what it was to be human. Mezrasi chaka o chiso nina ta na. Yui gi na jikan de atta. Soro soro shigoto ni modora ne ba naranu jikan de aro. Chakai wa kore made ni shiyo. 
そなたとわらわが茶を飲むことをすかんものもおるようでなおえ The witch gripped a teaspoon and flipped it with her fingers, setting it up in the air. Oh, oh. that scared me. Then it was flicked by the finger of some invisible person in empty space and flew straight into a bush close nearby. The bush moved violently and Kenan came out. Ah, Kenan. It seemed that he had been there for some time and had been watching their tea party. The spoon was gripped in his hand. If he had not been able to catch it by reflex, it might have hit him hard in the forehead and caused him to start oozing blood. Hmm. Hansin seo. Chakai wa kore de o waru zo, Kano. Itz kara soko ni ita no? Koe o kake te kure leba, Kano kun no kocha mo ire ta no ni. 女同士の語らいを邪魔したくなかったのであろう<笑><笑> Cannon kept silent, but it seemed that there was a slightly hostile look in his eyes. On the outside, he acted respectfully. But unlike Shannon, Cannon did not trust the witch. Beatrice wrapped the table with her pipe, and the tea set turned into gold butterflies, which flew upwards in unison. They scattered in every direction, and the cleanup was already done. Kenan had said it in a small voice, but it seemed that the witch had heard it perfectly. She giggled but did not reply. Shannon, <laughs> Beatrice's body also became gold butterflies, which scattered in all directions and disappeared. It was a very fantastical and beautiful scene, like a blizzard of gold leaf. For a while, Shannon quietly watched the witch's exit. Kenan approached her from behind and spoke with a very different expression on his face than his sister's. ねえさん。あいつと付き合っちゃダメだって言ったじゃないか。ベアトリーチ様はそんなに悪い人じゃない。確かにちょっと怪しいところはあるけれど。僕たちにしか姿が見えない時点で十分にうさんくさいよ。
人間じゃないのは僕らも同じだよ。姉さん。ペナンス words became more serious. Those words probably gouged at Shannon's heart. Shannon bit her lower lip and hung her head. 僕らは家具だ。たとえ名前をもらい、人として接してもらったとしても、僕たちの生まれが変わるわけじゃない。You are no longer furniture. Those words Beatrice had given her, which had made her happiest of all, floated through Shannon's mind. 家具じゃないよ。うん、家具だよ。僕たちは人間未満の存在だよ。姉さんはそこを忘れたふりをして、人間のふりをしているだけ、自分でも分かっているはずだよ。私、家具じゃないもん。This is reminding me of something, but I can't quite place my finger on it. Like the feeling of wanting to be more than what you, you are. It's kind of like gaining knowledge of something that was once forbidden to you. But essentially, what I want to say is that it does sound like Shannon is perhaps the only one who is seeing the truth, so called, the beauty of being a human. While Kenan, who is stuck in his status as furniture, refuses to open his eyes to that. Yeah, it's not a human. 僕らには愛する資格も愛される資格も初めからない。It seemed that Cannon's criticism had shifted focus from Shannon's interactions with the witch. Shannon also noticed that quickly. お嬢様に聞いたよ。正直、呆れたね。ジョージ様と一緒に旅行に行くなんて、家具の身の程を忘れてるよ。姉さんはあの魔女にそそのかされて、自分が人間になれたと勘違いしてるだけなんだよ。It's also giving me, um, you know, the Adam and Eve vibe of the being tempted by the snake to eat, eat the what, what, what was it that they ate? <laughs> was it an apple? But yeah, it, it's giving me that kind of vibe with the snake. Was it a snake? <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> With a snake tempting Eve to eat the apple? Kite Kanon Kun. Tashka ni watashita chiwa kagu da yo. Ningen ni otota. Miman no sonzai. Demo. Sono mita nai bu o. Moshi e rareta nara. Sore wa. Ningen ni nareta to yu koto ja nai no kana. Songa mono. ありはしないよ。うん、あるの。それを得たなら、私たちは家具なんかじゃない。人間になれるよ。バカバカしい。なれるものか。And spat that out, but weakly, and turned away. That was probably resignation. The baptism of days upon days of suffering being furniture had firmly sealed his heart. ううん、なな <laughs> Kenan pointed straight at the sea at the horizon. Kenan didn't understand what she was actually pointing at and couldn't do anything except look between the horizon and Shannon's expression, which looked like it was posing a riddle. Umi, Kanon-kun wa umi ga nani iro ni miere? 
It was an all too simple question. Kenan tried to guess the meaning behind that question for a while. But since he couldn't think of anything, he gave his answer straightforwardly. Objectively speaking, the sea laid out beneath a cloudy sky could probably be described best by Kenan's words. But as Shannon closed her eyes and smiled, she shook her head slightly. I think I understand it now, what the double meaning Beatrice was talking about. And it's precisely what Shannon and George was discussing when they were on the beach, right? That because they are together and probably because they are in love with each other that Shannon can see such a cold dark sea as something so bright and blue. Love changes your perception of things. Perhaps that's what she's getting at? Kenan bit his lower lip and was silent for a while. <laughs> As Kenan stood bewildered, unable to understand what she was saying, she took his arm and opened the palm of his hand. Shannon softly said something there. The brooch? It was that magic brooch which, which she had received from Beatrice. The magic charm shaped like a gold butterfly which could fulfill love. <laughs> After being told that, he couldn't just throw it away. Kenan didn't know what he should do, and he stood there confused for a while, the brooch still on the palm of his hand. Shannon put the palm of her hand on top of Kenan's, and the brooch was warmed by both of their hands. Even as he said that, Kenan couldn't be cold-hearted towards something Shannon was pressing on him. In the end, Kenan agreed reluctantly to take it, saying he'd proved that he wouldn't surrender to the witch's power. Shannon smiled and nodded back. きっと。カノン君は大切なことを学べるよ。きっと人間になれるから。そうすればきっとカノン君にもこの海が美しい青に見える道がない。ネズミ色は何度見たってネズミ色さ。違うよ、カノン君。そう見えるのは愛がないから
However, that in itself didn't mean his noble research had been suspended. He may have left the study for a change of mood. But the thoughts filling his head were no different from those he had inside the study. So Kenan knew that no matter what the time, speaking to Kinzo when he didn't want to be spoken to would always be a disturbance to his research. はい。during the time that Kanan bowed to him, Kinzo had already returned to his own world and had forgotten that Kanan was there. And once again, he began rambling to himself. Amidst those words, the name of that witch was repeated many times. Oh, Beatrice! どうすれば読みがえるのか <laughs> He's crying again. As Kenan listened to his master's weeping voice over his shoulder, he turned around just once. When he did, right behind his isolated old master was the silhouette of a person that shouldn't have been there. Oh. It was the witch. At once, Kenan, thinking that the witch must be plotting to do Kinzo some harm, quickly ran back to Kinzo, trying to become a shield himself. But when he saw the expression on the witch's face, that emotion of his vanished. Because Beatrice's expression was one of sorrow or maybe pity. <laughs> Right behind Kinzo, as he repeated the witch's name over and over, desiring to be reunited with her more than anything else, was the witch herself. And yet, Kinzo couldn't notice a thing. Even when Beatrice tried to rest her hand on his shoulder, he didn't notice a thing. なぜ Still, what is that it? Beatrice herself? But then, why does Kenan see her? I understand Shannon, but why Kenan? Kenan took the brooch he had received from Shannon out of his pocket. Could he learn something that would enable him too to see what he currently could not? <laughs> He looked at Kinzo's back once more. The witch was no longer there. School Culture Festival Oh, it's a very cute school festival. 
The biggest event for the Ushiro Miya family in fall was the family conference in October. But for Jessica, there was another one before that, the school cultural festival. Jessica liked school. To her, it was a place where she could let out the stress she'd built up during the rigid lifestyle she was forced to lead at home. For the cultural festival today, she had formed a group with her friends and would be performing casual pop rock on a temporary stage. She had kept on preparing and practicing for that and was really looking forward to today. But there was one thing that had been worrying her. She looked at the clock. There was still a little time, but she was uneasy. Would he really come? As she was about to breathe out a stress-relieving sigh, her heart jumped as all her friends suddenly started speaking in shrill voices. Ah. I think it's kind of funny that every time we speak, there's that little sound effect. <laughs> it's not necessarily the case that all girls are like this. But at Jessica's school at least, the cultural festival was really a boyfriend exhibition. Jessica didn't have a boyfriend. She had many friends of the opposite sex, but no one special. But Jessica was a little famous around the school, and everyone naturally expected that she had a fitting partner. Furthermore, her pride had caused her to act like that was the case. Through such acting and dodging of questions, she had somehow managed to keep up the bluff until this year. Oh no, it's gonna come crashing down on her! But for various reasons, she hadn't been able to escape this year's cultural festival. Jesse, Karishi, kita? Huh? Ah, yeah. Mada, kite ne, mite da se. Shigoto, isogashi no kana. Jesse no Karishi, don na hito na no? Semete hinto dake demo daste yo. なにけ何けスーツとかで来るもちろんメガネかけてるよねキャーねえでも本当はいないんだよね今素直に白土をしたら私の仲間に入れてあげるって非常にこの文化財を涙で濡らそう Truly spoken like someone who has something to hide. <laughs> Jessica laughed awkwardly, covered with cold sweat. It was extremely doubtful whether she really had deceived her sharp witted friends. Chen's ridiculous plan surprised Jessica widely. Even so, it was a little more realistic than the unrealistic method running through her head of getting a boyfriend in a huge hurry before the day of the cultural festival. Well, actually, I think Jessica could definitely put up an ad somewhere in a newspaper or something and get... No, wait, that defeats the entire purpose. <laughs> Putting it up on a newspaper where everyone could read it. Never mind, I take that back. Why? 
ていうかきっとかのこ文化祭の日は仕事に決まってるぜ迷惑かけちゃ悪いしさもちろん予定表も確認済みですかのんくんはその日お休みになっていますここんな時ばっかり要領がいいのなじゃなくて休みならもっと悪いぜせっかくの休みを私の見栄のために引っ張り出せないよかのんくんは引っ張り出されないといっつも閉じこもってばかりいますので。無理に引っ張り回すくらいでちょうどいいかと思いますよそそそうなのいやでもカノン君に悪い I think it, feel, it feels like Jessica at this stage already liked Canon I'm surprised she didn't realize it herself なら晩作つきますねおとなしく彼氏はいませんと白状なされてはいかがでしょうか What if she brought Genji? Genji looks very reliable. Definitely someone who is a working man. <laughs> What am I saying? So, I'm sorry, 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 I'm シャノン私のために本気で悩んでないでしょおちょくってるでしょ<笑> Jessica wrestled about with Shannon, her eyes teary. But Shannon was unconcerned, laughing with her usual smile. はい。私とジョージ様のことを茶化してばかりのお嬢様への仕返しです。At that comeback of Shannon's, the likes of which didn't happen even once a year, Jessica rolled around on her bed, hugging her cushion, writhing and suffering. Shannon's triumphant smile was unbearably frustrating, but right now, she was the only person Jessica could talk with. She could wait until later to suffocate her with a cushion. It's <laughs> good, <laughs> sir. It's good, 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 sir. いや、それはそうだけどいやいやいやいやジェシカ buried her head in her favorite cushion to hide the fact that her face had grown bright red and she bit away at her thumbnail it really was a reaction to be appreciated Shannon and Jessica were about the same age of the same sex and they were also friends and they were both right in the middle of puberty They could never talk enough about things related to love. That's why they were able to open with each other about these topics. So Jessica had heard in detail about how Shannon's and George's love was progressing, and on the other side, Shannon had heard the details of what type Jessica liked and what kind of man she might be interested in. Judging by Jessica's reactions, it would probably be crude to talk about that in detail. But we won't get anywhere with Jessica just rolling around on the bed forever. So, to be blunt, Jessica had been thinking about Canon ever since he had first appeared. Oh wow. There was almost no young man on Rokinjima. So maybe it was natural that Jessica, as a girl in puberty, had become interested in Canon. But if anyone said that, It would destroy the romance of a maiden's pure heart and of love at first sight. Shannon had been with Kenan the whole time at the Welfare Institute, so she had known him before they had started working. So Jessica had asked persistently about what kind of person he was, what his hobbies were, what his favorite foods were, what type of girl he liked. Even Shannon could clearly tell that Jessica was infatuated with Kenan. カノン君をデートに連れ出せるいい機会じゃありませんかで,で,でもでもでもカノン君にだって好きな人とかいるかもしれないし私なんかの見えっ張りに付き合わせたら気を悪くするぜお嬢様のような素直じゃない方を何でしたっけジョージ様に習いましたそうそうツンドラとか言うそうですよ
あと十数年かすると流行るんだそうですよ。What? What's with this? They will be quite popular a few decades from now. ズンドラ I gotta check that out. You sure is. I was gonna say that. <laughs> Ultimately, Jessica wasted several days before finally agreeing to the plan of having Kenan pretend to be her boyfriend. I'm guessing he would show up. Hi, Ojo-sama. Jessica realized that she had called him at a bad time and immediately regretted it. Kenan always had a sour look, but even so, he had some good days and some bad days. Unfortunately, this reaction was the latter. Aww, poor Jessica. All that confidence and effort she had amassed by practicing in front of a mirror all night was wiped out in about five seconds. You know what? I think this also explains. Oh, wait, I think Battler already said it before. But it also explains why she defended Cannon the first time they all came to the island. Jessica turned bright red and hung her head. Watching her, Cannon sighed. Jessica thought he was getting fed up with her, and her face went pale. Shannon, I'm hearing from Shannon. Is this a story of the school of the school of the school? Huh? Ah, 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 it's so interesting to see her react this way in front of Canon, especially after all her hitting, hitting Battler all the time, you know. Shannon, から当日は特にお嬢様にお仕えするよう厳命されております。僕は高校には行ったことがないのでわかりませんが、何でも男性の付き人がいないと。The way he says it, though. Ushiromiya Honke Reijo ga shomin ni otoru koto ga atte wa nara nai to toku ni genmei sarete olimasu no de. Shannon, ato de bukkuras! Jessica kept yelling for strange voice, a broken smile and steam pouring out of her head as if she was a boiler. As Kenan watched this, he sighed again. Kenan wasn't an idiot either. He fully understood what Jessica intended by inviting him. However, in truth, he found it nothing but bothersome to go along with the lady's game of love. But Shannon had spoken to him persistently about it. He was very indebted to her for many things. He couldn't refuse. And in his pocket was that brooch. Couldn't this strange turn of events also have been brought about by the magic power residing in this brooch? Ridiculous. But those words of Shannon's came to mind. What did Shannon see that I cannot? I don't understand Shannon's feelings. We are furniture. As if we could become something more than that. Jessica, still rambling on in a strange voice, and Kenan, sighing deeply, were a truly odd combination. Poor Jessica. It's hard to imagine them together right now. Jessie, 
as my friends all gathered together, they were looking this way with hard-to-describe expressions. Oh, please don't tell me Kevin went there in his, like, servant uniform. <laughs> oh, goodness. Whispering to each other in low voices that couldn't be called low. Even I felt kind of shameless. Did I just say, sorry, who? <laughs> like, I don't know who's shown up. Ah, crap, crap, crap. My mind is blank. Okay, at least he's not in his servant's uniform, but... <laughs> what if he's wearing it under his coat? That will be hilarious. Wait, now I'm thinking about it. Is he actually younger? She's so awkward with him. And if he responds coldly, everyone would know they are not actually dating. Oh no, he's speaking so politely to her. Shannon It seemed that Jessica was just as uncomfortable. It looked like she was finding it difficult to cope while bathed in everyone's interested gaze. When he saw Jessica's appearance, Kenneth thought he might have made things difficult for her by coming. なんだか迷惑をおかけしているような気がします。お邪魔だったでしょうか。それそんなことないって。僕がお邪魔でしたら、いつでも言ってくだされば。ああ、そう。僕が。Why? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Wait, this is too much for me. I think she's making things worse by saying that. So, so this I Jessica-sama. Oh no. <laughs> this is... This is not as bad as him showing up in his servant's uniform. But it's still pretty close. What was that? The sound of them all collapsing on the floor? Oh? <laughs> I see, I know what's happening. <laughs> when Kenan opened his eyes, for some reason, <laughs> there was a horrible tragedy in the room. Everyone had been driven into the walls, their arms and legs outstretched. Jessica put her brass knuckles in her pocket before Ken opened his eyes. Sorry, brass knuckles? Oh, 
この先突き当たりまで行けば仮設部隊があるからわかるぜサボテン待ってて Cannon seemed to be having a hard time adjusting. Pushing him in the back, Jessica sent him out into the corridor. Even though Cannon was confused by Jessica's attitude and show of agitation, which he had never seen before, he followed her instructions and headed in the direction she had indicated. After seeing him off with an awkward smile, Jessica slammed the door shut and yelled loudly. Sasa! Mita ne? Mita de show? Manzok sta? <laughs> oh my goodness. This voice threw me off. It was really good. This person is so on the mark. Jessica took the brass knuckles out of her pocket again and everyone energetically returned to their tasks. And went down the corridor as Jessica had told him to and found a temporary stage set up where the vending machines should have been. It was probably being shared in time slots between the individual groups and clubs. A student group was singing and the place was already fired up. Disliking that ruckus, he found a dark wall to lean against alone. So, this is what they call high school. It sure is noisy, Kenan thought. Then he remembered Jessica just now, acting in a way that he'd never seen before. Honestly, she was in such high spirits that alcohol might have been involved. To him, the greatest virtue for a person was to always be composed and intellectual. In that sense, it was very hard for him to get used to the atmosphere in a school cultural festival. He had the responsibility of reporting everything he saw or heard to the master. So he would also have to report about Jessica's unrestrained behavior earlier. At the very least, it was not fitting for a daughter of the Ushido Miya main family. The master, Krauss sama and especially Natsuhi sama would probably be angry. If I were to report it in a way that protects my lady, should I blame it on inappropriate school friends? Oh no. <laughs> Kenan thought back on how Jessica had acted earlier and sighed again. He could understand Natsuhi's headache a little now. Come to think of it, Natsuhi sama. As the president of the PTA should have gone straight to a social after attending cer the ceremony in the gymnasium. Uh, the PTA is like a parent association. Hadn't she said that she wouldn't be there to see Milady's event? That was probably for the best. No, that's just sad. <laughs> Several female students kept glancing at me. It seemed they were all whispering the same sort of things that Milady's school friends had said, and it was really unpleasant. Come to think of it, didn't Shannon warn me? That if I was going to walk around a school festival on my own, I had better watch out because a lot of strange people would come and talk to me. Uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> I feel like the genre just changed from a murder mystery to a dating sim. <laughs> it kind of feels like one right now. Just as expected, a group of girls I'd never met started talking to me. Their stares started to make my back tingle. Didn't she tell me some magic words that could chase them off in times like this? Um. Sumimasen. Sure, I'm here. This this is the magic word? 
I was sure he was gonna say something silly. Ah, it worked. Instant reaction. Well, that got them to go away, but it hadn't really changed the number of people staring at me. <sighs> no way I'm ever coming to a place like this again. Come inside for about the hundredth time that day. As he did, the lighting changed and the standing audience started cheering. Looking around, I realized that there was suddenly a large number of people here. And unlike earlier, they were all guys. With this huge crowd, I couldn't even see the stage. Fortunately, there was a fallen beer case nearby, so I tried using that as a footstool. And I noticed that there was now a new group on the stage. Oh my! She looks really cute today! The leader was Milady. She had changed into stage clothes and was even holding a guitar. I didn't know she could play. No, maybe she could. I have seen her practicing air guitar before. Natsuhi-sama wouldn't approve of any hobbies outside of study. Maybe she was always practicing in secret. Come to think of it, she's been returning really late from school recently, hasn't she? Maybe she's been practicing at school far, far away from Natsuhi-sama's prying eyes. It really is for the best that Natsuhi-sama didn't come. If my lady were to get scolded by Natsuhi-sama after putting so many hours of practice in, she would probably be very dejected. <laughs> what? I could hear Jessica Summer's forceful voice through the speakers. Jessie Sama? Maybe that's her nickname at school. The students in the audience kept calling out that name. She really seems like an idol right now. I was a little aggravated by that inferior name, which was inappropriate for Milady. Jessica Sama was in great spirits as they call kept calling her Jessie Sama. They were all probably her fans. With her mic performance, she was responding to that and firing the place up. It was almost like a song program on TV. At first, I had thought all this was frivolous, but that feeling now changed into appreciation. This was pretty incredible in its own way. Kenan had never listened to music of his own free will, but he had often heard the kind of music that the people of the Ushinomiya family liked. Since that was almost all classical music, Kenan had naturally started liking classical music too. So to Kenan, the songs Jessica and the others were singing were, how should you say it? Very modern. In any case, he thought that if Natsuhi-sama heard it, she would probably faint. goodness <laughs> but everyone looked like they were having a really good time the diehard fans who had even brought pen light sang along dancing crazily with the exact same movements almost as though it had been planned ahead on the stage Jessica Sama also sang enthusiastically dripping with sweat he couldn't find a single element that was appropriate for a daughter of the Ushinomiya family but it looked like she was having a lot of fun. I couldn't keep up with that atmosphere, but... Anyway, Milady was full of life and looked like she was having a great time. 
As I looked at Milady having a good time, I thought, isn't this what Ushiro Mia Jessica is really like? Don't I know better than anyone just how badly life on Rokinjima kills your own sense of self? Then the time she spends, not as Milady, the successor to the Ushiro Mia family, but as a single girl called Jessica, living life to the fullest, must be very important to her. I worked close to Milady, saw her in all seasons, and I thought I knew everything about her. But that was only a single limited side of her, Milady of Rokenjima. We are furniture. We serve on Rokenjima and end our lives on Rokenjima. So I had come to think that Rokenjima itself was our whole world as though, just like in those old geocentric theories, the ocean spilled off the end of the world into an abyss. As I looked at Milady like this, I realized that this was a horribly narrow outlook. I couldn't keep up with the excitement of the crowd, but I felt like I had seen something that cannot be seen on Nokenjima. Although I don't know if that was the unseeable thing Shannon was talking about, I still can't see the ocean as blue.今日は<笑> Naturally, the topic of Jessica's cultural festival came up at dinner. School events often became social gatherings for influential people. It was the same for the Ushiromiya family, who were big names around this area. As Natsuhi remembered the names of the important people at the social, she updated crowds on the news concerning them. Jessica didn't really have any interest in that discussion, and rudely slurped her pumpkin soup. Hey, hey, so Jessica, so you Jessica, so when he saw that, Krau smiled a little and interrupted his conversation with Natsuhi. Jessica's how was it? The culture fair? Huh? Oh, ah, ma. I saw it. She worked hard. What was she watching? Jessica's face turned bright red. She probably hadn't thought that Natsuhi would actually come to see her on the stage. She felt a mix of happiness and embarrassment. Actually, she hadn't wanted her mother to watch because she didn't want to be told that her music was inappropriate for the Ushiro Mia family. But it wasn't as though it didn't make her happy to hear her parents say that she did a good job after watching her try her best. Jessica mo nakanaka. I have a feeling they are not talking about the same thing. The smile that happened there a second ago crumbled like sand. Jessica immediately realized that she was talking about something different. Jessica was also the school's student president. Wow, there's a lot of responsibilities. She had no interest in something so annoying, but her parents had been pushy, so she had grudgingly accepted. 
Unfortunately, she was popular in school, so she had won the election easily. So Natsuhi was praising her for the ceremony organized by the student council at the beginning of this cultural festival. Actually, she had just carried that out half-heartedly. She had immediately met up with her friends and had held a stage rehearsal for the rest of the time. I don't like this. ただ、挨拶が少し早口でした。内容は旧大点でしたが、早い口調はそれを薄れさせます。一呼吸奥癖をつけるといいでしょう。After she finished eating, Jessica didn't feel like going straight to her room. You could say that her room was the place where her parents had specified for her to be. So maybe you could say that for Jessica, choosing not to return to her own room and instead disappearing to an unknown location in this large mansion was a meager form of resistance. Jessica felt that even being in the mansion made it hard to breathe, so she went outside to the rose garden. <laughs> Jessica laughed at what she was sulking over laughed at what kind of words she would have had to receive to be satisfied. Ridiculous. In the end, I'm just a spoiled little kid. I can't believe myself. It's almost funny. お嬢様。<laughs> Kenan had suddenly started talking to her just as she had tried to force a laugh, so she choked. <laughs> Jessica's expression had become the one Kenan always saw. The listless Jessica from a second ago was gone. If he still only knew Jessica as the successor to the Ushiro Mia family as he did until today, he would have mistakenly thought that Jessica's mood had sprung back to normal. But that was wrong. He, knew not, he now knew a part of her that he could not see until today, so he understood that there was no way that, on the inside, Jessica was just as she appeared. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even though she had heard the words she had most wanted to hear, Jessica became shy and couldn't accept them frankly. Kenan hadn't been consciously looking down on Jessica to that degree. But people playing unique instruments were always on the other side of the brown tubes in the TV. Yet got it into his head that it would be impossible for Jessica, at least. But I'm not sure anymore. Kanon君、その家具だからって口癖、本当に予想ぜ。使用人は生きた家具であれってやつ。現地さんがよく口にしてるもんな。心得というわけでは、本当に。
家具ですし福音の家の子たちがいろいろじいさまから援助をもらってるってのは知ってるしそれに恩義を感じてるのも知ってるよでもだからって家具なんて言い方はあんまりだぜ私たちは同じ人間じゃないかよカノン君は私が歌ってるのを見てどう思ったとても楽しそうに見えましたそれは多分違うぜえ楽しそうに見えたんじゃなくて羨ましかったんじゃないおおそんなことは Even Kenan himself probably hadn't noticed that emotion. Kenan had seen something he had never seen before, never known of before, and had probably become jealous. And to trick himself about that emotion, he had called himself furniture over and over. Oh, that's so sad. I was like, I'm going to go to the back of the house. いろいろな面倒がこれからもあると思うそれについては運のない星の下に生まれちまったと諦めるしかないさ多分カモン君が福音の家で生活しなければならなかったのと同じに私たち自身にはどうしようもない生まれる星は選べなかったそうかもしれませんただ私とカノン君では大きく違うところが一点あるわかる ?I am furniture and you are not.He was about to say that, but stopped. わかりません。カノン君は自らの運命が自分の全てだと思って諦めた。私はこんな運命じゃ納得できないから自分の思い切りを頑張ろうと思った。だから、後宮家のお嬢様をやらなければならない窮屈な自分と、自分の好きなことに精一杯の自分というもう一人を作ったもう一人の自分うんカノン君は自分のことを家具だからと言い聞かせてきたそう言い聞かせなきゃならない辛いことがきっとたくさんあったんだと思うそれについては本当に気の毒だと思うでもそれだけでカノン君の人生を全て決めちゃうなんて、私はそんなの悲しいと思うんだよ。<笑>人はさ、自分の中に、自分が本当に好きになれるもう一人の自分を、いつでも作り出すことができるんだよ。現実逃避とかとは違うぜ。そのもう一人の自分でいるとき、私は最高に生きているって実感できる。だから、普段の日常がどんなに窮屈で退屈でも私はきっと窒息せずに生きていけるってわけ自分の中に自分が本当に好きになれる自分を作る Make another me which isn't furniture Through her relationship with George Sama has Shannon given birth to a part of herself that isn't furniture And did this other Shannon see something that cannot be seen by furniture? Hmm. I'm sorry. Kanon-kun's private is not a good thing. But, I can imagine it. Kanon-kun's private is probably nothing. It's a bad thing. Kanon couldn't reply, but that was answer enough. He had no concept of a private life. So Canon would always be Canon. So furniture would always be furniture. Canon kun mo Canon de sa. The Gospel House gave new students new families and a new life. So it also made a point of giving each of them a new name. In his case, that was Canon. Tashkani. 僕のこの名は仮のものかもしれません。He had thought that he wasn't anyone other than Canon, but he remembered there definitely had been a part of himself that wasn't Canon, but that was far, far away beyond a distant fog of oblivion. なら、カノン君にもカノン君であるときとそうでないときで
違う自分がいてもいいはず使用人である時のカノン君は自らを家具と呼び厳しく事故を戒めてるかもしれないでもカノン君じゃない時の君はもっともっと自由に生きていいと思うんだ Those words definitely weren't just lip service. Jessica had also been like this in the past. She had cursed her own birth into an environment different from all of her friends at school. She had been the only one in a heavily constricted environment, forced to learn various things. And she had even received words about the friends she played with. Though she had been sad about that, she had given up. Thinking that she had just been born under that kind of star. But one day, Jessica had stopped giving up and surrendering. Stuff like the Ushiro Mia family customs and pressure, those didn't matter. She created a real Jessica inside herself who could do what she really wanted to do. I I think I'm gonna cry. That's why 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 I'm gonna cry. He had thought that his real name didn't matter at all. So he had thought Canon was all he was. And now Jessica was saying that he should create a new existence and that a self that wasn't Canon. He was silent for quite some time. Maybe his real name had risen to the tip of his tongue. After hesitating for a long time over whether he should say it, in the end, he swallowed it back down. No. Those words signified a slight rejection. 僕が本当は何という名前であったとしても今ここにカノンとしてあることだけが現実です過去など何の関係もない作られた家具の材料が元は何という木の幹であったかなんてどうでもいいことと同じですだからよせって家具じゃないんだぞ君は人間だぜ僕は人間じゃないおのキャノン clearly spoke his refusal. It was with a rage that he normally didn't show. Jessica couldn't say anything back and was struck silent. お嬢様は人間です。だからどんな生き方をしようとも自由で、どんな未来も、可能性もある。それはまるで、翼を持ち、自在に空を舞う鳥のよう。でも僕にはそんなものはないんです僕がたとえ鳥に見えたとしてもアヒルに過ぎないアヒルに翼はあっても飛ぶことはできないなのに空の夢を語るなんてそんなのは残酷すぎる家具だのアヒルだの何だってんだよ一体いや Jessica had unconsciously gone along with Kenan's forceful manner of speaking, but she realized that she shouldn't fire back and swallowed her words. ちゃんとした人間だぜ<笑>使用人としてのカノン君が家具だと言うならそれでもいいよでもならカ
トン君は家具でない時の人間の時の自分を作ってもいいとは思うないそんな可能性を抱けるのは僕はそうじゃない僕には未来も可能性も見るべき夢もないだからお嬢様それ以上残酷なことを言わないでくださいなんでだよなんでお嬢様が僕のことをご自分と同じ人間だと勘違いなされているようだからです僕とお嬢様は違う存在それをはっきり申し上げておきたかったのですシャノンに聞きましたお嬢様は僕のことをお気に入りになられているとかえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっえっ一時恋愛の真似事をすることもできるかもしれないでもそれは自分を騙しているに違いないいえお嬢様を騙すことにもなるのですシャノンとジョージ様も必ず破綻するその日が訪れることをシャノンだって理解しているだろうにバカなことをババカだってことはないだろそりゃジョージ兄さんは立派な人だし両親の期待も背負ってる確かに結婚とかになればエヴァおばさんがいろいろと口出しをしてくるだろうしまあそのゼントは他難だと思うぜでもなジョージ兄さんはそんなのに屈する人じゃねえシャノンをジュリエットになんかしねえぜきっと幸せにしてくれる人は家具と恋などできないお嬢様が家具を愛することができても僕にお嬢様を愛することができないと The words of c a n o n s crushed all of Jessica's bittersweet feelings from today There was no way she could have anticipated the emotions of such a blunt rejection In an instant, she lost the willpower that had caused her to try and unravel something stubborn in c a n o n s heart And before she knew it, she was just standing there in shock お嬢様が僕を好かれているという気持ちが僕の思い上がりによるものならどうかお許しくださいいいやまあそのそこは否定しねえぜありがとうございますえ僕を人間だと思ってくれてありがとうございますそのお気持ちだけで僕は本当に嬉しいですそしてそれ以上は僕には残酷すぎるから I don't know why k e n t o n refuses to follow Jessica's way it's so sad k e n t o n could be human but he Refuses to step out of that box. Maybe because of fear, or maybe because he really thinks that he doesn't deserve to be human. But I wish, I really wish that he can be helped in a way. Yeah. Mo. Mo. 十分だぜその悪かったなジェシカ scratched at her head as she spoke and tried to force her voice to sound bright 私一人がそのいろいろ先走っちゃって迷惑かけたよ<笑> The tears in her eyes 正直ごめん貴重な休みを毎日日振り回しちゃってほんとい、yeah. え僕も楽しそうなお嬢様が見られて嬉しかったですじゃあ今夜はこれで終わりにしようぜ私も部屋に戻って消灯しないとまた母さんに怒られちまうよ
<笑>そうされた方がよろしいでしょうおやすみなさいませお嬢様Oh no. Is Kenan really this heartless? Jessica turned her back to him and slowly trotted away, looking disheartened. But suddenly, she started dashing pell mell and disappeared in the direction of the mansion. As he watched her go, for just an instant, Kenan was tormented by the feeling that he had just made a huge mistake. But no, he thought. This had not been a mistake at all. It was for her sake that she'd been forced to refuse her now, while her pain was still at its smallest. わらわの魔法で二組目の恋人たちが生まれていたものを。いつからそこに最低なやつだな。When he turned around, the witch was suddenly there. It looked like she had been there the whole time, enjoying the performance as if it were a play. わらわへの暴言は。愉快なる見せ物に免じて特別に許す。男と女のこじれ合いに勝る見せ物は千年を経ても存在せぬな。わらわにとっては何よりも甘美な止められぬ快楽よ。うん。And pulled that butterfly brooch out of his pocket. It was the crystallization of the great magic that the witch had bestowed. Without hesitation, Kenan flung it hard onto the ground and stomped on it. <sighs> Didn't expect that. Perhaps so. So, Momo, Jiu, you. Wara, I got Scarao Casta Ninga no Oka. Oh, my tone, as you know, Koto, Kuchini, sir. Hokerna! Oh, my wa. Shano, our end, the Chicago Castanjanai. Koi, ni Muneo, Kogas, Shano, no Kokoro, no Skio, Tsuite. 自分を封じていた鏡を割らせたしかもそれだけじゃないその末路まで想像がついていてもてあそんでいる違うか<笑>家具とはつくづく哀れな存在よ夢も未来も恋すらもないかよいよい身の程はわきまえるに限るぞ<笑>ジェシカの心にはお前が察する通り淡い恋心があったそなたはそれにハサミを入れ刈り取ったつもりでいるだが知っておるか木は勝手に茂らせたものより枝を間引き剪定したものの方が太い枝をつけるというぞ。家具に恋する娘か面白いぞ実に面白いシャーノンとジョージもやがては結ばれえぬ恋に行き詰まりわらわ好みの大きな果実を実らせるだろう Oh no しかしいかんせんあの二人はうまく行き過ぎていて面白くなくてなそこへ行くとお前たちは大いにわらわを楽しませてくれそうだぞ The witch laughed even though she had known that the two could not be joined she had lent magic to join them together However, they couldn't escape the fate that had made it impossible for them to be joined 
the witch knew that. Even if they were joined, the relationships of Shannon and George, Kenneth and Jessica would fail for certain. And as they wandered through the eternal desert in the hell of love, they would be tormented by eternal thirst. やがて必ず訪れる二人への過酷な運命の干渉量として頂くわけよ。おまい。これに勝る店物は千年経っても存在せぬ。金蔵を見るがいい。恋の味を知り、楽園を追放された哀れな老いぼれの末路を。死んで
、そのわらわが家具を支配できぬとは、なんとも愉快な三すくみ。金蔵め、実に面白いことをしてくれる。家具め、わらわを打てるか試みてみるがいい。おう、なあな、なあ、Wondering if Kinzo. Does Kinzo like Beatrice or not? Koyoi, Makitaru Koi no Tane wa Futatsu. Sude ni Makitaru Tane to Fukumete. Kore de Mitsu. Wait, two seats? Three? Beatrice! Well, if Kinzo is acting like this, then he must like Beatrice. Why? I was one of the people who was born with this mask. I was weak. Never mind. I take that back. You can't answer me so much as I can answer you. I can't answer you. Your father. それ以上のお酒はお体に触ります。南条先生からもご注意を受けておられるのでは。黙れ源氏。お前にはわからぬ。我が嘆きも苦しみもわからぬ。お前だけは我が苦しみを理解してくれていると、お前だけは我が最古の友人であると信じているのに。なぜに理解できないというのか。おお、ベアトリーチ。なぜ私だけを置き去りに Oh, Kumasawa again. Sinistra, Kikoete, Kuru, Susuri, Naku, Koene. Watashi wa jijo o shiritsu mo, doushiu mo nai no de gozaimasu. Subete wa wakasugita futari to chikasugita kyori. Soshite, umareta iye gara ga tousugita iue no hineki. Watashi wa tada tada. お嬢様のお気持ちを汲み取り、足音を殺して静かに立ち去るのみなのでございます。え。とそそれって I'm thinking I think I'll end here for today it I don't even know what's happening at this point because okay well a lot of things happened as always but mostly we get to see Jessica's other side and We all know about her infatuation with Kenan, and I guess at the end there, Kenan almost fell prey to Beatrice's magic, but for some reason is able to resist, and so in the end he broke Jessica's heart, and he is now a really sad furniture. I guess this also is kind of sad because we learn that. Shannon and George's love will never come to be, and Jessica and Ken's love will also never come to be. I guess that third love, the seed of love, was Kinzo's, whose seed was already sown. Honestly, the last part there with Kinzo made things very interesting because we learned that 
He does not love Beatrice, but in fact, despises her, in a way. Hmm. So he, it, maybe, maybe it's something like love and hate are of the same, two sides of the same coin. Maybe it's something like that. But Kinzo wants to find Beatrice again, and he can't. Is that why he has friendships? I don't know. I feel like that's a point that they will have to explain more on later on in the story. About the gospel house and what furniture really is. You can say that furniture is people who are not human, who don't know love, who cannot be loved, who won't be affected by love and i guess in that way shannon is no longer furniture because she is definitely very much affected by the love she's having with george but canon is still furniture but well i just thought it was a fun episode today i enjoyed the school cultural festival it was very different from everything that we've um seen until this point we get to see Jessica acting very much different from how she usually acts. Which I thought was really cute. But yeah. Anyway. I think that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And bye!